I'll invite him to come up to the front. Mr. Helson, if you can move that camera on, Mr. Johnson. And there you go. Mrs. Perkins wants it off of her. <laughs> and Mr. Johnson, just let me know. Um, I need to zoom in or anything else on this one. This one's all right, well, to start off, I am just excited to be here. I'm excited to come and tell you, I told you I'd come back sometime and tell you the updates. So I'm excited to tell you the updates of 95% and the reading intervention and what it's done. So if you want to go on to the next one. So this just shows quickly um, kindergarten through fifth and sixth grade, just some of our goals and where the students are at and where they were before. So looking at kindergarten, we wanted 90% of our students passed skill one and 60% of our students passed skill two. Skill one is just letter recognition and knowing the sounds of those, of those letters as well. And we started out at the beginning, we didn't really test them, we wanted to learn make sure they got those foundations first so they were at zero percent but now we have 53 percent of our students who have already passed that skill um, and then if you look at skill two skill two covers more of the short vowels and in that skill same thing we're up to 22 percent as of right now um, that have passed that skill already and we want to get to still um, to 60 percent in first grade, if you look at that, uh, skill, um, skill five is the long vowel sounds. And in skill five, we want 65% of our students pass that skill at the end of the school year, and we're already at 61%. And why is it 65? Is it why is it 65%? Um, also, honestly, it's because we weren't sure exactly where the students would be at when they first started because of all the COVID. And so we wanted this, most of the students, the majority of them. So this was a goal that was set um, between us and, and the teachers as well. And Mr. Johnson, don't you think that after we finish this year, it will give us a, because this is our oh, first school year with yeah. it, we'll be able to adjust our goal next year higher so they're already pretty close to it so i think they're gonna succeed it but um in second grade we have 70 percent past skill six um, skill six goes into more of the vowel teams and it gets a little bit more advanced um, in their phonics but we're already at 62.5 uh, percent of the students that have passed skill six in that grade in third grade, same thing, we want 70% um, past skill nine. Skill nine goes through all the basic and the advanced skills, and they're just about to enter into the multi-syllable um, skills. But we, we start out with 30% of the students and we're already at 50%. In fourth grade, we wanted all of the students by this grade to be tested out of the phonics um, skills so that they can get more of the comprehension and vocabulary. Um, and we started out with only 3%. That means that we had uh, 60, what is it, 62%. Um, oh, sorry, that was fifth grade, sorry. We had 3% um, that were tested out at the beginning of the year, and now we're at 66.6% that have tested out. Like that, that's amazing. That is amazing. So they're doing awesome. And same with fifth and sixth grade, we were at 38%. Uh, that, that's the one that we had 62% of the students that still needed phonics skills at the beginning of the year and now they're at 15 percent so and this is something that with this program where when we started when we started the year and we looked at the, the very beginning and you can see how low this first column is on all yeah, of them everybody. where covid really impacted with kids and also and we'll be looking at the um, ice set or the ice station scores coming in here it was, you know, we're so fortunate as a district to have been able to get this program when we did, to be able to have professionals like Mr. Johnson and the team, but it's not just Mr. Johnson. I know you're, you're awesome. Don't get a big hand, just walk out of here. But, but our teachers, here's the one thing that, that Mr. Johnson shared with me earlier is our teachers, and he'll talk about this a little bit more from the get go last year, even before we hired Mr. Johnson, our teachers were so excited and willing to, to use this program. And these numbers right here 
really are amazing. Like, there's still always work to, to do. Um, and there's going to be other measures that might show us a little bit lower. But this is a, such an accurate measure of do our kids have the fundamental reading skills. And without this program, this isn't just a testing program. This is a teaching program. And that's why the kids are getting where they're, where they're at. So thank you, Mr. Johnson. I'll let you continue. Oh, you're good. So ultimately, like um, Mr. Williams said, they're making so much progress. And I'm excited to share this information because I wish I could take the credit for it. But I know that, that this is because the teachers are invested in it. They're the ones that are doing all the work with them. So it's been incredible. Um, if you want to go on to the next one, this yeah. is their, um, I can't really see it up there. Sorry, yeah. you may have to zoom out a little bit, but that better. <clears throat> yeah, this is their ice station overall reading scores. So these scores and actually maybe go down just a little bit yeah, right there. So these are from August and Jan a comparison from August to January. Obviously we had more students move in, but we went from 43% of the students above grade level to 57% of the students are above grade level. We went from 33% of the students below grade level to 19%, but we also in um, on on grade level, we stayed at 24%, but we also had a lot of students that moved in, and that's why the numbers are different. Yeah, can I, can I, so, so this is a moving target throughout the year. Yes. The skills get harder throughout, whereas on the last one that we looked at, we have a set target that we're hit, going for, and we're going to be able to hit it. I'll explain February. Is that yeah. what your question yeah. is? Yeah, explain so February. So in February, more. that is a month that they're not required to take I-Station. Some teachers do give the I-Station tests, but not all of them do. We don't do it every single month. So next, and the next one is in March. So in March, all the students will take it. So that's why the number is so low in February is because not every student took it. Can you talk a little bit more on why the I station scores might not be as accurate compared to the the reading ninety five? Um, yeah. There's a, there's a lot that goes into that. I don't know how, how much you want me to go into that, but briefly, like summarize. Briefly, the overall, this is their overall reading score. It incorporates a lot of things. One that, I'll, in my opinion, isn't the most accurate is probably the fluency. I think you can get a better accurate of their fluency when they're speaking. For example, in iStation, they go through and they read, and then once they've read it, they click on it, and you have students that just will just click. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that part, I, I don't look at as, is that kind of what you're looking for? Yeah. <laughs> a brief. <laughs> so there's things that I love about the ice station and there's other things that I don't I don't love. And, and we're happy to have the people that have moved in, but a handful of our kiddos that have moved in have come from other states that have had not had schooling since last March. Well, they're probably behind and, in our thing. And so when you look at the drop from 57 to 53. And you'll see a lot of that when we look at the other graphs in fourth grade, especially. Yeah. But, it's, but they're still improving. But here is their overall reading. Um, and if you look at kindergarten, I love looking at this one. Our low students who were below grade level are now above grade level, which is awesome. They're, what the program really is working. They're making so much progress, which is what we'd love to see. Um, and then if you go back a little bit, if you look at between first grade, second grade, you're seeing similar. They may not be above grade level, but our, our students that were below are at grade level now in those grades. Yep. So you can see first grade. And then down is now second grade. Second and third. One thing I like, Mr. Johnson, about this is that the trend lines mm -hmm. are all, they're all moving up. They are, they're making lots of progress. Okay, three, three. Um, then if you look, this is where fourth grade is a little bit straighter. I think ultimately we've talked about that, but I think they had a ton of students move in in fourth grade, both here and um, out in Hamer. Anyways, so I think that's part of it. If you look at this, this test November, right here, will also bring it down because you look at the last one that we have, it's, it's, mm -hmm. tre it's trending there. It hasn't moved the trend line, but Anytime you have a, an outlier like that, yeah. sometimes it's going to throw it all off. But. And that happens. And I, I remember when I taught third grade, we'd see something like this. And, and I, I would have these graphs for my students where they would graph their own. And what I loved about it is they'd go, 
Yeah, that was right before Christmas, Mom, and I didn't do my best. <laughs> and so they, they would own up to it. But I'm not, I don't know exactly what happened in November, but at the same time, they are making lots of good progress. So well, sixth grade really seems to be high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's a good thing because they should be and and even with sixth grade what we've done is a lot of the students have tested out but we've looked at their ice station and there's a a big group of them that aren't doing so well in comprehension and 95 percent does have a comprehension component that they're getting that intervention as well oh, good. so and then if you want to keep going but Ultimately, if you know anything about me, I love looking at the data. I love looking at the numbers, but this is what's most important. This is where the need is. This is a fourth grade sample um, for Mrs. Tolman's class. This student, she set some goals at the beginning of the year. This was August 20th, and she said, I'm excited about being a conflict manager. But then she said, I'm nervous about spelling. I want to be a better speller was one of her goals. Then if you scroll down, this is five days later. <laughs> this was a prompt where apparently they had to write where they want to go in the world and why. She said, I want to go to Paris, France because of the Eiffel Tower. I, I, I would have a mansion. And I love the teacher's comment. Great reason. <laughs> so, so you can tell she's starting to improve. She has the capitals on her, you know, her Paris and France. Um, there's still mistakes there, but she's making progress. Then we're going to go to the next one. This was January 26th, and she talks about parent-teacher conferences. And the student says, at PTC, I think Mrs. Tolman will tell my parents that I've gotten better at spelling. I hope that Mrs. Tolman will tell my parents that I am the best at reading. I, I, I like what I like about uh, fourth grade, or I like about fourth grade is Idaho history. It would be better if we learned by watching shows. <laughs> so what you can see here, though, is that the student is getting that confidence. She's getting confidence in her spelling. She's getting confidence in her writing. She's writing a lot more. And ultimately, she feels like she's the best at reading. And that's what it's all about. Are we helping our students get more confident in their reading skills, in any of their skills, so that they can become better? and they feel that confidence in order to achieve it. So we can go on to the next one. Another thing I love to look at and talk to are the different teachers. Um, when I talked to Joan Sidaway, I asked her some questions and just thought, you know, what have you noticed? What can we do better? What have you seen that's going well? She said, in previous years, we would pull the special ed students um, in for math and reading, and we would basically hold, held their hand and guide them through each problem. Now they are in the classrooms and are required to become more independent. This gives them more confidence. Teachers now also are accountable for their students in special ed. Before, I, I wasn't here, I have no idea, but I, I have been told that before a lot of it was the, the special ed students were sent to another room. They were forgotten, if you will, by the teachers. I don't think intentionally, but at the same time, they were sent somewhere else. Now the now the we're we're having the aides get the support inside the classroom where the teachers are there. They're more involved with the students. They're working with the students. And ultimately what I love is even our special ed students, they're getting the support they need, but they're becoming more independent and they're becoming more confident in their own work. So um, this is from Mrs. Blake, a third grade teacher, and she said, we have been looking for something like, like this for years. I love this program. Um, she said, uh, I love this program is consistent in every grade, and we know exactly where they're at. It is an easy program to follow. I love it. <laughs> Another one was from Terry Smith. She's a kindergarten teacher out at Hamer, and she said, I like the program because it can target the whole that even fluent readers have. Uh, lost my slot, sorry. <laughs> then once they master that, they can move on to where they need to be. I also like that there is time every day devoted for intervention. Every student gets it every day at their level. So ultimately, what's the future look like? Where are we at? Where are we going? Um, I, we're going 
to continue to make progress with the students. We're going to continue to help them to develop a love for reading. And that is what I would love to see um, out here in our district is just helping them um, gain that confidence in their reading skills. But we also found the students that were most successful were the students that in their classroom, their teacher took the 95% and used it not only just as an intervention, but they incorporated it into their teaching. For example, if I was giving a spelling list or something, instead of just, here's a spelling list, go memorize it, good luck on Friday. Instead, I'm going, hey, look at this word. What do you notice about this word? Does it have a silent E in it? Okay, so what vowel sound is it? And they're, they're incorporating those core phonics skills into their teaching. And so I, I was talking to Shane earlier about this and I, I told him, I, I really don't wanna be a salesman for 95%. That's not my goal, <laughs> but I'm passionate. And I know that this program has helped a lot of students and they developed something. And if you wanna to go to the next slide, um, they have developed what's called a core phonics program and this is for grades k through three and this is really what it is is it provides a systematic and explicit word study and spelling it reduces the number of students who need those interventions in the first place um, another thing it does is it helps fill the gaps where the core instruction doesn't meet the needs of the students so all too often we have we have for example a core program that is working and there's things we like about it, but it's not filling in those holes, if you will. And the 95% that we have right now is filling in those holes and it's doing an awesome thing. If you wanna to go to the next slide, this is where I know Carrie can relate to it. I think of Rexburg and the roads and how awesome they are over there. Um, but we're so used to finding the holes and that's what we've been doing this year. We've been taking the time to find the holes and see exactly where the students' holes are and we're filling those holes. But my goal and what I would love to see in the future and my hope is to just eliminate the holes in the first place. Then we don't have holes to fill because they're already, they won't be there. <laughs> and that's what this, this core is going to do. It's going to help them ultimately not have the holes in the first place because right now they're doing amazing things they're making lots of progress because we're finding the holes and we're filling them but what we need to do is eliminate the holes in the first place so that only the students that really need it are getting those interventions rather than almost i mean you saw that the numbers at the beginning of the year we had almost all the students needed those interventions mm -hmm. But I'm hoping in the future that some of these programs and different things that we have and will continue to hopefully get will help eliminate that. So, and so in this program, this is just a brief overview really quickly of what it includes. It has teacher editions. It also has workbook consumables in it. Um, it also has those manipulative chip kits and it has them for each student so that they can have their own to do and practice their spelling. It also has digital presentations, which we can use our brand new TVs with, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, you can also share those, which if we ever have to um, do remote learning again, it, there is a built-in option for that now. So, and lastly, I just wanna say um, thank you. Thank you for allowing the students to have these these programs and for all that you do i know it's a lot of time a lot of sacrifice but um i want you to know that we appreciate it that because of some of the decisions that you're making you're making a difference in the students lives so are there any questions for mr johnson or follow-ups comments uh i'd just like to say you're doing a terrific job getting these kids <laughs> up to the upper levels I wish I could take all the credit, but it's not me. <laughs> so, so when you make projections for next year, well, that that will show quite a difference in the way you, uh, where you start. Lauren. How many years I, do you think you can tell so. you get where you want to be? Mr. Johnson, do you want to speak on what your experience using this at your previous school when it came? Because I started when Mr. Johnson and I worked in the same school previously. I was there for year one, and then 
you guys hired me out here. And 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 then Mr. Johnson was able to stay there for year two mm -hmm. and, and see that. If you wanted to speak a little so, bit from that experience. Yeah, absolutely. Especially in the grade that I, because I was in third grade. And so that very first year, we saw similar numbers where uh, it wasn't, I think, as low because of COVID, obviously. But, mm -hmm. but we saw similar numbers in that we had so many students that needed those interventions. And by the second year, and especially in third grade, fourth grade, there was less and less every year. And what I loved about it is we got to use other parts of 95, which we already have here, is the comprehension part component and the, um, the vocabulary part. And with the vocabulary part, what was fun is, is with my third graders, for example, we learned Latin and Greek prefixes and suffixes in third grade. And it was so much fun because I would get there and I'd pull up a, I'd pull up a word or I'd make up a word and I'd say, tell me the definition of the word. And they would go, oh, well, tele means distance. Vision is something that you can see. So you're seeing distance, you're seeing something from a distance. Does that make sense? And so, and then you could just make up, I made up funny words too that just weren't even real, but, but it was fun because they learned Latin and Greek and learned how to break words apart and find definitions of those words already in third grade. So ultimately, that's where we're going. And we've already started working on collecting things for that. But that's so exciting. It's fun. <laughs> so exciting. And, and I thought we were in serious trouble because of the time that we lost. And but I it looks like you've almost. And I heard that from a lot of teachers. They said, I did not think that we would be where we're at right? mm -hmm. because of what was lost. But we are. And we're going to continue to go. I love it. You know, and, and, I, and I appreciate that. And, and yes, I want to sell because so many times sitting in this position in this chair, I hear so many negative things about this and that, this extracurricular, this, this needs to change. We are doing a fabulous job. Our teachers, our administration, we, we are working our tails off for these kids. And if they, if, you know, if you have any naysayers out there saying, well, we're just West Jefferson, that that has to that has to go we it takes time to move in, in a different direction but yeah you know it's not always just the test scores because our kids could test poorly one day we can't put all of our eggs in the isat basket yes. all of our eggs in the ice station basket and say oh we've, we've, we've helped kids but this, these are the types of programs that we can do that and as we gain the as they gain the confidence in their reading this is going to help them the rest of their life and that's what's most important. I don't want to just help a student become a reader for a year. I want them, I want to, I think everybody wants that. Every teacher wants that. They want to help change their lives and have an impact on it so that they become successful for the rest of their lives and want to continue to learn. Well, I'd like to send a note home with students to ask, invite the parents to watch the board meeting. <laughs> I can, I can send it on that, Leo. <laughs> I'm serious. Our parents need to see this. And how many do we have on? I'm not three. Sure. Well, that's just, no, that's our Zoom. That's that's, that's, that's me, Zoom. Mrs. DeGraw, oh, Mrs. Okay. Jerry. So, you You're still there, right, Mrs. I Jerry? Can look right now on <laughs> yeah, I would, you know, I just think that all parents. There's good, yeah. things, there's good things happening. This is such a positive thing. The parents need to know about it. We have 11 people watching right now. So we, we generally have upwards to 60 to 80 people that go back and watch it right. all afterwards. Yeah, be a good idea. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thanks, Mr. Johnson. Um, and so